So it's been three years since the launch of the Pixel 6 and it just received the latest update to Android 15 and will still receive future security patches and updates. This is a huge flex for Pixel owners that they're still receiving great updates even after so long. This phone is very cheap online so I decided to daily drive it for a couple weeks and use this new Android 15 update to see how it performs. So one of the biggest reasons for buying the Pixel 6 or any Pixel phone will be for their great cameras. So let's start off with that. On the back, you've got a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and an eight megapixel front facing camera. The photos are sharp, detailed, and the colors look natural. Basically what we've come to expect from a Pixel. I barely go outside and touch grass, but I made an exception for this review to grab some sample shots for y'all. I've compared these images side by side with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I realized the iPhone is in a different league, but I thought it'd be interesting to see how it stacks up against the Pixel 6. This comparison is more for fun and to get a sense of whether the iPhone's camera truly outshines the Pixel or if the performance gap is as significant as the price difference between these two phones. The Pixel 6 has the typical glass sandwich build with the metal sides and you get that iconic visor of the Pixel series that most Pixel owners enjoy. The build quality is okay but definitely not on par with the iPhones and Samsung Galaxy flagships. It's a love it or hate it design but I think it adds some real personality. <laughs> The Pixel 6 is rocking a 6.4 inch screen that's 1080p and 90 hertz. The bezels are not symmetrical, which is sad. That's one of the main things I look for when purchasing a phone. Budget phones usually don't have symmetrical bezels, but nothing phones do, and that's one of the reasons why I made that switch over to nothing. It has a hole punch for the front facing camera, which is just a tad little bigger than other hole punches. It has an under display fingerprint scanner, which is not an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, so it's not the the fastest but it is still usable especially for the price the display is not the greatest point about this phone though i do like the use of a lower resolution and a lower frame rate because it's less taxing to the chipset making the phone still smooth not having to push the extra pixels at a fast refresh rate other screens are better than this even in this price range but the pixel has unbeatable strong sides in this price range like the stock os the software upgrade support and best in class camera <laughs> The Pixel 6 just received a fresh new update to Android 15, and these quick updates are something that you won't find on other phones in this price range. Android 15 has some great new features, and the ones that came to the Pixel 6 are paired apps on the home screen, theft detection, private spaces, archived apps, plus more. I will say that Android has reached a mature stage, so software updates aren't as groundbreaking as they used to be. However, the peace of mind that comes with receiving timely updates to the latest Android version and security patches is still a significant advantage. Overall, the UI is incredibly smooth, even with the Tensor chip, and the animations throughout the OS are impressive. They really enhance the experience and give you that distinct pixel feel that I appreciate. Android in general is highly customizable, but Pixel OS falls short in that area. If you enjoy tweaking every aspect of the UI, options like Samsung or even nothing phones would be a better fit. I love customizing my phones and the thing I hate most about the Pixel 6 and all Pixel phones is that you cannot remove the at a glance widget on the home screen. The home screen is one of the most important places on your phone and I can't believe that till today, Google does not let you remove it. <laughs> So the Pixel 6 is rocking Google's Tensor chipset and this was the first generation of the Tensor chip which was designed in-house by Google and manufactured by Samsung and not the industry leading TSMC. And this may be the reason why the Tensor chip has been a little lackluster since its announcement. The new Tensor chip introduced new continuities between the software and the chip in areas like speech detection and cameras but other than that these chips are on the weaker side and don't offer as much power as other flagships. It's a 5 nanometer octa-core chip with 8 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 memory. Interestingly, the Pixel 6 has been surprisingly stable. Even after years of use, I rarely encounter hiccups or bugs. I used the Pixel 7 Pro as my daily driver for about a year, but that phone struggled with underperformance, bugs, and overheating, so much so that I ended up selling it and switching to nothing phones. I suspect the Pixel 6's slower 90 hertz display and lower resolution demand less power from the chip, which might contribute to its smoother performance. 
While this is just my theory, overall, the Pixel 6 has been far less buggy than the Pixel 7 Pro I owned. The Pixel 6 has a 4,600 milliamp hour battery, which was decent at launch, but given the phone's age, battery health can vary. For me, I still get around 5 to 6 hours of screen on time, though that might differ for others. I wouldn't say battery life is a strong point of this phone. Charging speed is another weak area. The Pixel 6 supports 30 watt charging, which pales in comparison to other phones that charge at 45 watts or higher. It takes about 2 hours to fully charge the Pixel 6. Other than foldables, nowadays smartphone upgrades and innovations have come to a halt. So in this current market, people that are buying and using older phones are really not missing out on much and they're probably picking the smarter route. That wraps up this video. If you're on the hunt for a budget friendly phone, be sure to check out my review of the Nothing Phone 2A as well. Alright, thumbs if you liked the video, subs if you loved it, I'll talk to y'all later.